Hello and welcome back. In our last video, we discussed about SysML and System Composer from MATLAB. In this video, we will go further in System Composer. As a first step, we will learn about how to compose and how to analyze systems using architecture models. So I have this snippet pulled from MathWorks website. In our last video, we referred to MathWorks documentation to learn more about System Composer. We will continue to do so. So any system, right, it refers to a composition of elements that interact to achieve a goal no single element could accomplish on its own right so what is meant here is we have some elements right and uh, they interact with each other right Right. And this results into our system. Okay. So it's a composition of different elements, right? That interact with each other, right? To achieve a goal which no single element could achieve on its own. The constituent elements of a system can include mechanical parts, electrical circuits, computer hardware, and software. So an example of this would be automated clutch system, where the clutch system is the mechanical part, and to automate the clutch, we will be installing a motor. Uh, to drive this motor, we will have uh, some electronics and electrical components, uh, edge bridge, uh, probably some more uh, electronic hardware around it, gate drivers, uh, some signal processing on board, right? And we will also have a software to acquire signals from the vehicle and actuate the motor so that clutch gets actuated as required. So now a system specification is what will describe the system element, their characteristics and properties, then their interaction with each other and the desired interaction or interface of the overall system with its environment. So if we look at it, system specification is sort of a grand and a master document, which has almost every little detail about the overall system and its interaction with the environment. So in our example, system elements would be the motor, then the clutch actuation mechanism, which is nothing but the mechanical system, then the electronic hardware unit, and the control software. And then their characteristics and properties, this is what will define these each element right how they are supposed to behave what are their attributes what are their parameters right and then their interactions with each other so how they interface with each other what information is shared between which of these elements and then the desired interaction of the overall system with the environment so how does this clutch automated system interact with the rest of the vehicle or 
the road or the driver so this is about system and system specification now let us see where system composer comes in so system composer allows us to describe the systems in terms of architecture model and these these are nothing but combination of structural elements with underlying behavior description so we just talked about system specification right what is a system specification we describe all the elements characteristics their properties right and how system composer achieves this is using something called as architecture model they are nothing but the combination of these same structural elements with underlying behavioral description so these descriptive models right we are calling them descriptive model because they contain definition and explanation of these systems they represent characteristics and properties of these element or or, or the models or the subsystems and they can sometimes be presented as distinct diagrams that are consistent with each other so the idea is to express the system as a architecture model and these architectural models can sometimes also be defined using some distinct diagrams if you remember our previous video we have all we already discussed few diagrams like state machine diagram sequence diagram activity diagram use case diagram right these are the same distinct diagrams that we are talking about here they in a sense also represent the architecture model and hence the actual system all right now to perform a basic systems engineering workflow to design a mobile robotic arm using system composer we have to see create architecture model with interfaces and requirement links all right we will look at it maybe today in the later section or maybe in some other day the model based systems engineering workflow that is enabled by system composer involves starting with stakeholder needs right so this is what comes first then identifying the requirements and use cases designing an architecture iteratively iteratively means in a continuous fashion so the we get we have some input we design the architecture then we have some feedback from the architecture we use it we go back to the requirements again and then again we make some changes in the architecture so design in loop and uh, it's a iterative process and it continues until we are satisfied with our architecture and implementing functionality using behavior models so functionalities are implemented using behavior models we can also use analysis and trace studies to optimize our architectural design and communicate facets of the system using architecture views all right so let's take a look at what is this mbse workflow so this is the model based systems engineering workflow we usually start from the needs or the requirements so here we have stakeholder needs from that we derive something called as requirements and then use uh, we also consider the use cases how the system is supposed to be used what are the different operating scenarios and from that we start designing our architecture structure and behavior and once we design our architecture then we again go back look at the requirements and use cases according to the architecture and then according to the new architecture and the present requirements and use cases we try to 
uh, restructure them so that they are more compatible with our present architecture and then we come back to the architecture restructuring and uh, behavior change and then again we go back to requirement and use cases this is how it it goes front end back now on the optimization front we do this optimization we look at the system characteristic we we try to improve the system characteristic uh, and 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 this 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 becomes an iter one one more iterative uh, process then then we have a multiple viewpoint there are different ways to look at this architecture it could be from different stakeholders point of view it could be from different uh, probably a project uh, stage point of view right so that is where the communication comes in uh, so we look at the uh, architecture from a different point of view and then we have some feedback so that we can improve our architecture and uh, that is how this this loop continues then from the defined architecture structure and behavior we start modeling our model in simulink right because uh, that is our uh, goal in the end because uh, this is the model that is what we are going to use to simulate to refer uh, to generate code from and uh, eventually flash it on our uh, controller to test with the plant and once we start designing this uh, control model or, or or the software model inside simulink then also we we might have some feedback for requirements and use cases uh, we might have some hard constraints we might have some soft constraints right so some things might not be feasible at all uh, so that is where we have to revisit our requirements and use cases uh, and then the process continues uh, so this becomes another loop uh, sometimes we might have to go back and uh, also tell uh, the stakeholders right uh, we might have to give them also the feedback about uh, these hard constraints and soft constraints so th this is how this this whole process continues and uh, system composer enables this workflow so that is something that is built in to a system composer so let's look at this workflow uh, with system composer we can implement this systems engineering workflow uh, first one is author architecture model and define system requirements so what we are talking about here is creating hierarchical models of system structure that represent functional logical or physical decomposition of the system using components ports and connectors so here we are talking about creating hierarchical models of the system structure so something like subsystems or sub models then we import model from matlab tables and export them with system composer changes edit and view the instance specific parameters specified as model arguments on a component or architecture using parameter editor create and manage data interfaces between structural architectural elements using interface editor so we have a parameter editor we have interface editor then comes manage model to model allocations to show relationships between software components and hardware components and to indicate deployment strategies using allocation editor define and elaborate requirements using requirements toolbox in the requirements editor then link requirements to the architectural model elements all right so let's see overall what we have done here so first we created a hierarchical model of the system structure this is again nothing but a sub architecture right which characterizes and defines how the system is basically we want to represent functional logical and physical decomposition of the system using components ports and connectors so this is at a system level we are not yet talking about uh, very very basic unit level 
design we are talking at a component level uh, and, and system level design then we import models from matlab tables so this is where the uh, information about a specific uh, probably a variant or a prob probably a version of the system is and then we make changes in the system composer and then we export with system composer changes uh, edit and view instance specific parameter specified right so this is he here that is what is meant by instance specific a particular variant or a particular version specified as a model arguments on a component or architecture using parameter editor this parameter editor helps differentiate uh, different uh, difference between two variants or two versions of the system create and manage data interfaces between structural architectural elements using interface editor so this is where we create and manage our interfaces how to blocks communicate with with each other what kind of information gets shared between the two then managing model to model allocations to show relationships between software components and hardware components and to indicate deployment strategies using allocation editor all right so this is where we are defining relationship between software components and hardware components all right so allocation editor has to do with relationship between software component and hardware component indicate deployment strategies using allocation editor so one might have different deployment strategies right we we might be testing our system with different different uh, targets so we might have a, a different uh, microcontroller we might have a different ecu we might have a different vehicle right so allocation editor uh, helps manage uh, these uh, infrastructures so to say and then refine and elaborate requirements using requirements toolbox so we use requirements toolbox to uh manage these requirements uh and once we have them in the requirements toolbox we can link it with our architectural model element so this step is very important because uh, this helps uh, achieve something called as traceability so each requirement is linked with uh, uh the software right and uh, eventually this also helps uh, when we go to the testing stage because uh with this link or with this traceability uh we can be sure whether we have done testing for a particular requirement or not uh and when we do that testing we also know for sure what all components or what, what, what all part what all elements of the architecture were involved in that test all right that's all for today i guess system composer still seems very complex mathworks documentation is definitely helping uh, understand how this system composer should be used for architecture and system design i was kind of hoping to complete this document in this video but uh, personally i feel it's very complex and it has already been very very information packed session so i would i would prefer to make another video later on so stay tuned in I will see you next time. Thank you.